Hello, everyone. I'm Joel Baird, the general manager of Missoula Community Access TV. And I'm Kim Anderson. I'm on the board of MCAT, and I'm the director of grants and programs for Humanities Montana. And we'd like to welcome you to this March 21st edition of our Missoula Live. Solstice. You'll see the program like, oh, I just wanted to tell them. Equinox, not Solstice, right? Oh, gosh. Do you guys know? I think it's Equinox. <laughs> okay. Really, so the day and the night are the very same length this day? It's, yeah, it's got to be the no, vernal equinox. This is the first day of spring. Yeah, okay, it's the first day of spring, <laughs> unless it was yesterday. Sorry, I'm really and sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say that the program will run every day for two weeks, so yes. we might talk about, particularly if Stephen comes, we might talk about an event that's passed. Sorry, you missed it. Um, but we will be back sometime in April. So I had a few things to talk about. One, mm -hmm. MCAT in the St. Patrick Day Parade. Kim was in it. It was fun. We're going to show um, clips. I think a lot of people have seen our public service announcements. They probably need a good <laughs> laundering for spring. <laughs> so I thought, well, Scott could show bits in between the guests yeah. coming and going of the parade. It was a great day. Yeah, I mean, it, was. it was very marchy, you know, yeah. very blustery, but kind of, it was fun. And it kind of rained on us at the end. Very and fun. we bought... 10 pounds of candy, maybe more. Gone. $95 worth of candy, I'll and say that. Gone in how many blocks? Four. Max <laughs> so four. We didn't make it to okay, the end. Okay, so what you need is in trucks and trucks and trucks loads of right. candy. We That's learned. true. We learned. So, but you guys can watch here, and it's on the, um, YouTube at MCAT TV. You'll see it there if you want to. I want to say thank you to the Northside House. How Kettle did that House. go? It was okay. <laughs> you know, that's like groundbreaking. <laughs> we had like a little uh, fundraiser there, and 50 cents of every pint purchase went so to nice MCAT. But it was kind of fun to hang out with our MCAT crowd. And it's, so it's a fun thing to do. If you have a fundraiser, you, you would like to raise a little money in a congenial environment, um, Northside Kettle House. And I guess a lot of the breweries do that. Mm. As an I think Kettle House has been doing it the longest okay. and, and is the most committed They're the to best. it. They're the best. Yeah. Um, and then I just want to remind people, Saturday, Animation Drop-In is still available at MCAT 1 to 5 p.m. every Saturday. And I think we'll take it, we'll see, through May. Through May. Yeah, yeah. if the weather gets really nice, may not be yeah. as many kids. However, when the weather's really nice, MCAT Summer Camps. There you can see our website at MCAT.org. It's the first thing when you land on the the splash page. And so if you're interested, there's two camps that meet in the afternoon in June and July. One deals with wildlife um, filmmaking, the other with stop animation. They're $110 just for the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I understand by virtue of the Missoula Public Library, we can get free lunch through a program of the food bank. Oh, great. Kids, Kids Table is the name of the program. Nice. Um, and then again at the end of July, there will be a all-day summer camp for young adults to make the zombie movie. That's a $200 camp, and you can see all of that at the website. And then finally, I have, if you want to become a public producer at MCAT, you can join us on the second Wednesday of every month. And uh, the tour and training is April 13th, 5.30 p.m. No appointment necessary. Just come to us at MCAT, 500 North Higgins. We're in the northeast corner of Spruce and Higgins, and that's it. Okay. That's what I got. I have only one thing, and, and it's because it's money for people, so I should feel like I should get that oh, word wow, out there. Okay. Um, Humanities Montana is, has another grant deadline coming up, so there is no top limit. It's if you have a project that could use a grant of uh, over $1,000, uh, normal size of a grant from Humanities Montana is $4,000, $5,000. Uh, if you're doing a program in the humanities, English, philosophy, history, jurisprudence, uh, the theory and history of the arts, right. um, please go to our website, humanitiesmontana.org, and take a look at our guidelines and, uh, and our requirements. And I would encourage you to apply. It's an online application. And again, the deadline is April 20th. Excellent. Now we can turn to our patient guests, Rebecca and Bradley. Thank you for coming over. Hi. Yeah, hi. Um, Rebecca and Bradley have come from the Missoula County Elections Office to talk about the upcoming election cycle, as mm -hmm. if people haven't been talking about it broadly. We need to talk about it. <laughs> this is the nuts and bolts. Like, if people have all these political opinions, they actually need to, to do something about Vote. it, and that's called voting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so how, 
what's going on with that whole process? You were here before yep. of seeking election judges mm -hmm. and good news, right? Right, I'll let Bradley mm -hmm. speak on okay. behalf of that. Yeah. We're really happy to announce that we exceeded our recruitment goal and we have over 730 election wow. judges who've been certified to, to serve you this guys year. and the, the county, mm -hmm. Missoula yeah. County. That's and a big great. thank you to groups like you guys who brought us on board and helped us spread the word about this and oh, get it out wow. to the community too. So we're looking in pretty good shape for our upcoming elections. Great. And we've got three of them this year, so it's going to be a really busy year. Yeah. And, uh, and the three elections are? We have the May 3rd annual school election and then any special districts, they also mm -hmm. go along that, election, that cycle. And then we have the June 7th primary. So that's our federal primary. We've been getting lots of calls of, When's our Super Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, Where's we my ballot? <laughs> so we have a little bit of ways to go. We have till June, and then um, in November, everybody gets together on the ballot, and uh, it's the big one on right. November. Yeah. yeah. Could you t speak a little uh, to the the primary? Like, mm -hmm. I think people have questions about it. They may say, "I want to vote in the primary. Do I have to be registered with?" one of the two existing parties in the two-party system in order to vote? Sure, that's the other phone call we've been getting is, I want to change my party status or I want to be able to sign up mm. for a party status. In Montana, we have what's called an open primary process and that protects your secrecy because if you did register as a party, that's public information and people may be able to be, figure out how you would vote. So um, voters will receive two ballots, one for each eligible party. Um, sometimes they might see three ballots. I don't think we'll see that this year for a third party system. But um, they can only vote one. And so you don't have to worry about a party status or oh, anything. You don't. You, don't, you don't have to you register. You can decide. It. You can decide. Right, right in the moment. Yep. I, and we were just saying before the uh, show started that uh, there aren't that many states that give you that kind of individual freedom anymore. Right. I think there's like less than 10. It's a small amount. Oh, that's why a lot of people think. I've got to yeah. be affiliated with a party mm -hmm. in order to, to vote in the primary. Right, and to be able to register a party and receive a par dedicated party ballot, that's called the closed system. So we're in the open system. You have your choice of which party ballot you want to vote. That's really exciting news for yeah. people, right? Mm -hmm. Now, will they do this by mail if they want to, or is this primary voting take place only at polling sites? This election will be uh, what we call a polling place election. However, if you've signed up on the vote by mail list or what we call absentee ballots, mm -hmm. if you sign up for that, you'll get your ballot 25 days ahead of time. Oh, wow. um, and you can ha decide during that time how you want to vote. And you can deposit it at different locations on election day, such as your polling place, and still have that polling place experience. Um, if you're not on the vote by mail list, then your dedicated ballot will be at your polling place on election day. But you mm -hmm. don't mail them in. You don't know. Right. This is not a mail-in. Right. A lot of our local elections are by sure. mail. There's some cost savings to yeah. that. So the city or schools like the, to run their elections by mail. But when it comes to federal elections, we're, we're required to have those by polling place. In that case, you, if you don't want to go, you have to get your absentee ballot in advance. Correct. You're not yeah. automatically going to get a ballot. Right. No. Nope. Got it. With those ballots, one of the things that we see that's really important is since we have the open primary, you'll get both ballots, but you can really only vote one. So if you like this candidate who's a Republican for president, but you like this candidate who's a Democrat for Congress, yeah. you need to vote all the way up and down oh, on one, like the slate. Republican or the Democratic ticket. You can't put them both in. Oh, we'll see that every now and then. <laughs> should be able to mix and match. Mm -hmm. And we really like to get that news out because if we get both ballots in, yeah. we can't wow. determine that voter's intent, which one they wanted oh. to vote for. Right, so does that invalidate and the And so vote? that would invalidate it. So yeah. if you do get them oh. by mail, when you get both both of them, there'll be two envelopes, one for your unvoted ballot, one for the ballot that is your party ballot, but you have to pick either the whole slate the whole of Republican slate candidates or the whole, or the slate, whole slate of Democratic, of Democratic. candidates yeah. in the primary. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's only in the primary. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't return it in time, like if it's invalidated, someone will get in touch with you if there's time to still vote. Oh, no. It gets a yeah. So statute says that once we've received your ballot and receded it in, yeah. um, we don't know yet if there's two back at that time. That means right. it's been accepted. It's like at the polling place and you put your ballot through the machine. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, you have the voters have to be really cautious of that. Yeah. Because they take may your time. they may lose their ability to vote if they end right. up mixing right. their mm -hmm. parties. <laughs> yeah, and they yeah. may not know until after the election because yeah. we won't open that 
until election day. Oh, true that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. open it right we away, open, like, oh, this yeah. is okay. Yeah. Yeah. We see two in there. We can't determine right. which one. Where, you know, if you're at the polling place on that day, we'd say, oh, no, you can only pick yeah, one or the other. You can't vote them both. But it's, it's like really going. great to get that news out just so that all everybody who's voting counts. Yeah. Right. And we're going to put in an extra little piece of how the open primary system works because in 2014, we saw a lot of mass confusion, a lot of calls, and we want to make sure that folks, that their ballots count. No, double doubt. Um, would you prefer people to call or email you if they have questions? Calling is always best. Okay. Our number is 258-4751. We have lots of staff available to walk them through anything. We also do have an email that's available for people who prefer just to shoot a quick email mm -hmm. as well at electioninfo at missoulacounty.us. That's not bad. Okay. Um, I saw Scott was putting up your website, you yes. know, and it had, it had um, an area for questions or a click yeah. area for email. So that's really good. Mm -hmm. What else should we talk about? I'm worried about getting Carl out of here. I know. Time, we might need to get Carl on. Sure but every... You're good for judges. Yep. We yeah. have. We have a great resource. Oh, this is important, right? We're going to be judges, so we need oh, yeah. to go to the training. Mm -hmm. And the training's upcoming. Yeah, we have our one last um, secret training. We'll be coming <laughs> up. Really? It's not going to be so secret anymore after this. There goes the cat out of the bag. Right. Next, <laughs> next week on Tuesday, we'll yeah. be running one final training for election judges who weren't able to make it in February. Okay. So we'll have one final training on next Tuesday. And if you catch this in time and want to sign up and have missed it, Call into the elections office and we'll get you plugged in for that. And this is just because for all you hardcore Missoula Live fans, last time yes. these guys were here, Joel and I promised that we would sign up to be judges. Yeah, and then we totally flaked. We <laughs> well, because you said, I'm going to be out of town. I was. This. I listed all the you dates for training. Uh, and I was like, oh, my God, none of them work. And then so. I said, if Kim's not doing it, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but now, now it's back on. we've mm -hmm. recommitted. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, we'll because be it's going to, as we said, it's going to be such a, an exciting day. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. the best place to be around the, a polling I place. I know. If you're, like I'm kind of a political junkie, so. Yeah. I, yeah. There you go. Well, thank you guys yeah, for all you. the information. And, and feel free to come back again. You know, maybe closer, maybe the end of April, you could revisit Before us. the school mm -hmm. election. And oh, yeah. we could really say, look, these are important dates coming up. Yeah. Because you sure. mentioned May 3rd. It's, yep. Our first election of the year for the first schools. Wow. The yeah, it's coming yeah. up. Yeah. All right. So thanks, thanks, you guys. Thanks. We'll be right back. Carl Olson is here from Missoula Public Library, and we'll show you a little bit of our view or, uh, of the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade. I'll give you my... Okay, we're back with Carl Olson from Missoula Public Library. Welcome. Thanks for coming. <laughs> and as, as always, there's all sorts of stuff going on at the library, right? Yes. <laughs> there's lots of excitement at the library. Excellent. As always, like you said, it's never a dull moment. But my fav first, before anything else, my favorite month is coming up. And it's my favorite month, too. It is National Poetry Month. Yep. I brought this little flyer. Oh, that's I love great. That's very nice. And the library um, is 
Missoula's home for poetry events and activities for the public, including Napo Rimo, so a month of writing poetry that the library will post anyone's poetry on face on our Facebook page. Excellent. We're going to have the ever popular poetry kiosk that is loaned to us by Humanities Montana. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. It's a poetry dispenser. It's, it's a, a dis conspiracy. <laughs> you go to get your towel, your paper towel, and instead you get a poem. Um, eat Your Words, Poems from Scratch, a workshop, a series of workshops with Emily Walter, and it's going to be focused on the poetry of food. Cool. Nice. Yeah. And um, a whole bunch of other workshops and music, and an afternoon with Montana's poet laureate yeah. Michael er Earl Craig. I can't get that name out. Um, and then we'll be featuring special poetry books. And it's just going to be a poetry mecca. Yeah. Throughout the month. Yeah. Throughout the month of April. And That's there great. are a few um, coordinating things that Humanities Montana has been able to do with the library. Uh, in conjunction with Poetry Month, which is our celebration of the 100th anniversary of the Pulitzer Prizes. Yes. And so the poetry and the poetry dispenser, for example, there they, I was just explaining why they have uh, our Pulitzer logo up there. <laughs> um, so all the poetry will be Pulitzer Prize winning poetry. Yeah. And in addition, um, I think that we are sponsoring the Earl Craig sponsoring presentation Earl Craig. and something else, A I think. A program called Word Song. Word Song with Dave Casario yeah. from Billings, yes. Which brings poetry to life with music. Yes, that'll be yeah. lots of fun. He's and it's really a great fabulous. partnership, as always, with um, Humanities Montana. Well, there's just so many fun things you can do with poetry, and I mean, you know, because it's a condensed form, yeah. it you you know you can you can not know anything and pop into the library and come away knowing that's right a that's lot. Right. That's right, <laughs> little nuggets, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, All the programs are in the large meeting room at the library. The, I, I think a lot of the programs gathering. will be in the large meeting room um, and in other meeting rooms too. We have a you know, a poetry workshop space that's probably yeah. different than the large meeting room, but there will be stuff throughout the library that people can access that's poetry related. And really, if I had my druthers, it wouldn't be one month, it would be three. Yeah, no, I <laughs> know, I know, 30 days. That's well, it's the cruelest time. month, that's why you need that. <laughs> Swing back, right? Yeah. Right. So it right. starts April first. People should um, should check the website missoulapubliclibrary dot org. Yeah, Scott's been displaying it. There we and go. Enter our annual Peep Show. It says they'll be able to um, access all the information. What's there. the Peep Show? The Peep Show. Oh, I didn't bring that date, but um, I believe that it's a week from now. People can create dioramas oh, using yeah. peeps. peeps. Oh, cool. And you can do like War and Peace they or. They have to be a literary theme, <laughs> yes. And War and Peeps. <laughs> peeps. I didn't even think of that. Uh, and, bring, and bring their dioramas to the library and enter them for the contest. And that'll be going on for about a month, I think. That's great. Because yeah, there's voting, it says, will take place April 6th through the 15th or so. You can bring Winners it in April announced. 5th. We're looking at the yeah. website. Yeah. Winners yeah. announce April 18th. Oh, that's really That'll fun. be fun. That'll yeah. be fun. Yeah. Huh. And even if people don't enter dioramas, it's fun to go in and look at how clever our neighbors can be when it comes to <laughs> using marshmallow products. Right. <laughs> In a literary context. In a literary right, context. Right, Because nothing right. goes together more than right. peeps and books. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds really fun, though. Uh, yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah. So the big thing that's looming in everyone's head when they think about the library is the possibility of a new home, right? A new home. Um, you know, it's it's been years in the planning. And it'll be a few more years before the doors open right. to a new library space, but a lot of things are falling into place, so I think it's a really good time to, to start talking about that. Um, one of the things that people might be interested in knowing is that the library has an agreement with the property owner just to the east of us, so the new library will be built on that block and then while it's being constructed for those two years, 
the current library doesn't have to move or downscale right. its services and and store it all the materials somewhere, um, which was you know kind of a worry for us for quite a while that we might have to do that. Virtually anywhere we would have moved, um, we would have had to kind of curtail the things that we do. So now we won't have to. We'll stay on the lot that we are um, currently at while the new one's being built, and we'll watch that construction take place. And then when it's ready, we'll have a book brigade. Yeah. Sure. And, you know, hands across America, or in this case, hands down Front Street, <laughs> and, uh, you know, transfer all the materials from the old library to the new library. And it'll be really fabulous. I don't know if a lot of people know, but our current library was designed to last 30 years. Right. They were really explicit about that in 1974. Wow. And that 30-year time period expired about 14 years ago. So folks who use the, use the library on a regular basis are really, you know, probably hyper aware of the need for space, the need for room to move, um, the collection is just cramped. Our collection should be much larger than it yeah. is. Books are not going away. I know for both of you, that's really good news. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, books yeah, are not going away. They're as popular as ever. Um, so this new library is sorely needed. It'll be three times as large as our current space. Our collection will be three tar times as large as our, wow. as our current space. And it'll have a, a, a little home for MCAT. Yeah, I know. Right? That's, That's what we're so excited yeah. to do. Yeah. I mean, one of the most logical partnerships in the world. Media. We're all yeah. media. Yeah. yeah. First yeah. Amendment. Yeah. Right. First Amendment, democracy, information, democracy, freedom yeah. of information. Yes, yeah. all of that. So all, all that. And not just MCAT, but some other organizations in town as well. In addition to MCAT, the Children's Museum will be um, under our roof, and Spectrum will be under our roof. The Science Museum will be there too. And so, really, it's a library plus. I mean, I don't even know once we open if library is going to be the adequate term right. for it. It's going to have some new fabulous term because it'll be this great one-stop shopping for families, kids, every, people of all ages. This huge learning do, center. Do I learning mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so all exciting. together, right? Media, yeah. science, uh, children's museum, like right. discovery and wonder, all under Culture. one roof, right? Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And I mean, the Missoula Public Library, am I right, is already the most heavily used library in the state? We're the busiest library in the state. That's based on the items that we check out. Right. We check out more items than any other library in the state. So yes. you can imagine how it's going to explode when there's enough space for people, because yeah. it's crowded in there. It is crowded. It's crowded. <laughs> it's definitely crowded um, over time. The common areas, when you look at the pictures in 1974, there was these wide, spacious yeah. areas for people <laughs> to read and thoughtfully meditate and whatever. <laughs> right. And all of that has been just really, really um, like squeezed. And we just have, we, we do not have enough space for people to just sink into a book and, and use the library in that way. The other thing that I think it's good for people to know when we get a new book to put on the shelf, we have to weed out some other book. And that's not a yeah. good, that one-to-one -one ratio is not good for a public library. You need, we need a much more expansive collection than that. And uh, that like makes for some diff difficult choices that yeah, librarians have Yeah, I was going to say, oh, that's yeah. like Sophie's choice. It's horrible. I know. <laughs> I know. And when it's Sophie's Choice on the shelf that you yeah, right. Sophie's you Choice over, it's just like, oh, it's Terrible. so meta. <laughs> well, imagine how people must have felt. You know, the, the town's population has been growing steadily yeah, since absolutely. 1974. Yeah. When you look at that section of the Missoula Art Museum that used to be the Carnegie Library, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people in 74 must have felt like they were just I remember out when it seams. opened. I was in high school yeah. oh, and yeah. I remember when it opened and how yeah. exciting it was. It was a big deal. And, it was and I'm going to get to live through that kind of excitement again. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. It's hard to predict the growth, you know? Yeah. And the population has certainly grown 
the demands of a public library have grown as well. I mean, you think of the entire internet situation. No one thought of that 30 years oh, ago. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Here's a classic example. This year, the IRS is cracking down more than ever and saying we're not giving out paper forms. Right. Well, right. guess where people go? A of lot course. of people will go to the library to download their IRS forms. And that's the kind of service that libraries sure. perform. It changes all the time and it grows over time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know the old clock on the wrist says it Carl's, Carl's got to go. He's going to be on time. <laughs> but thank you so much <laughs> for coming with the poetry. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you can stay there. Stay we'll we're going to cut away, but thank you for coming. A little more of the parade, giving us an update on what's going on. You're welcome. Let's okay. have you come back again sometime. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Whenever you want. All right, you guys. Here's a little bit more of St. Patrick's Day. More parade, bagpipes. And we'll be right back with our <laughs> next guest on the Zulu Live. And we are back. Yes. We're back with two representatives of the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula. I'm going to say their names. <laughs> <laughs> Christiana A. Olson, Perfect. Director what? of Education. And Jesse Roger. <laughs> who is the I like it. Director. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it's much. really Rogers. I was just Irish playing and the Scottish. Fool. Yeah. <laughs> So you were saying before, um, while we were running the St. Patrick's Day Parade, seven events, public events, coming up at the Historical Museum. We have a lot of fun stuff. Uh, every month, we, for 2016, we're debuting this thing called Crafts and Conversation. So mm. it's a different day throughout the month where we get together with uh, different craft type things. And we have an hour or two, depending on the time frame, where, let's see, one time it was a twi twirling? Uh, quilling. 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 Oh, oh, I love the yeah. paper. Yeah. <gasps> that, I've always wanted, I'm sorry, I missed what that. What is that? Yeah. It's a, it's uh, kind of has 
um, a history that goes way back, but you basically take these small pieces of paper and you twist them and you can make flowers and all sorts of things. So we have lots of friends in the community who have their own skill set and they've yeah. been volunteering yeah. to come out and show us. This this time on the second, um, from 10 to noon, we're just doing kind of a needlework thing. Oh, so you nice. can bring your own crafts and come and hang out. We have coffee and snacks and, and it's free to the public. Oh uh, yeah, um, Scott is showing from your website and it yeah. looks um, really inviting. <laughs> And then our last one was rug hooking, right? Yeah, we had oh, that. Oh, I was, do that. Oh, yeah. do you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I love to yeah. hook rugs. And then different times of the month, too, if you check out our Facebook or our website, we also usually have a heritage craft conversation mm. that is a brown bag lunch, depending on, you know, what week. We put these events on our Facebook page to try to let people know and also send it out on different events lists. But definitely like us on Facebook and keep us checked out because we have tons going on. So those are sort of our two craftsy events. Yeah, yeah. The heritage crafts are when someone comes out and they actually kind of give a demonstration, like we had a a spinning wheel oh. come out and she did some beautiful stuff. I mean, the things that she puts together are amazing. And they brought a loom, a loom. and demonstrated oh, weaving. Yeah. Yeah. Like so that. lots of fun there. And then April 19th is a way to support the Historical Museum because we'll be having our pint night out at Tamarack Brewery. Oh, so. See, there's See, like one. we did. Now, yeah. where is Tamarack? It is right over on Front. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know it. Right over by Harris exactly. Park. Yeah. Oh. Right next to Notorious B.I.G. and right. all of that area. Yeah. You can come so, drink for a good cause. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing like having a beer and supporting a good organization. So that's April 19th. Going to have fun there. And then the 24th is our next fun day at the fort, which is Archaeology Day, which is a big deal for Christiana. Yep. So I used to be an archaeologist before I came and worked at the in fort Scotland. Uh, in Scotland. Oh. And um, so this is a chance for me to kind of get back to my roots and uh, we've invited a lot of the archaeology students from the university to come and present their work but we also have kids activities like a simulated dig and a place where you can help decorate our um, our artificial cave with <laughs> cave drawings <laughs> and um, we're hoping to get a flint napper out and that's a free free mm -hmm. event as well so um, that's gonna be a lot of fun What's a flint napper? So, <laughs> it's a person who naps on flint. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can nap anywhere, so I'm sometimes a slate napper, but, um, so if you ever see, have seen like an obsidian arrowhead or a spear point or something, so yeah. those are made by chipping off flakes of stone, and so flint, a flint napper is a person who is able to nap the, the oh, flint and, and make it. And it's K-N. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the other kind. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So families can just show up. Yep. So let's see. Is it eleven to three mm -hmm. on Sunday, the twenty fourth? Mm -hmm. And there's more info about that as it comes on um, on our website and and on Facebook. Oh, and I forgot to mention our friends from Travelers Rest are coming out to do two presentations. So oh, they have a lot of hands on good. activities as well. Mm. We have a lot of fun family events out there, and yeah. you know we try to keep the community really involved. But our Facebook Facebook page is really becoming like our events calendar at this point. Because Lots things change so fast. Yeah, and you can so update. And, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we have some new memberships out there at the Historical Museum, too, for families specifically oh. to let them know when we're having camps, tours, they get discounts on things like that. So we have a lot of fun family things out there. Christiana does amazing educational programs. <laughs> it's fun. It is fun. Yeah. And uh, so definitely check us out there. And then there's Forestry Day. Yeah, and then the exact week oh, after that. So yeah. <laughs> be close to your yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then so April 30th, which is that next Saturday, is Forestry Day. And this is a uh, going to be a fun week. So we have Forestry Day, which is on Saturday, which is the only pro am show known in the entire nation. We have professional loggers coming or woodsman sport competitors coming from New Zealand, Australia, Canada, wow. all over the United States and uh, those are just a few. I haven't got all of the world competitors down yet. So we have people coming from all over for the actual competition. It will also be the finals for the collegiate. So starting Wednesday through Friday, it's actually the Western Regional Collegiate Competition. So uh, teams, university teams from all over the Western region are coming out to compete for those four days. And we're going to have wood chopping and pole climbing and um, so oh, cross cuts. And Are they doing burling? They'll the, be doing burling. They're running yes. on the logs in the water. <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah. 
Um, a fun e event for the professionals on Saturday. Burling includes, so there's a um, relay race, and it includes you have to jump rope on the burling log. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, that sounds hard. <laughs> yeah. So there'll be those. There'll also be logging demonstrations. We're going to have horse teams out carrying the high wheels around and doing some demonstration of actual horse logging. We'll have lots of kids' activities. Yep. The little lumberjacks. Little mini wheels. lumberjack competition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Draft horse. Bring your own axe. For <laughs> the yeah. 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 Foam axe. We have a special foam axe okay. for the kiddos. Not It'll losing any fingers. Right. <laughs> no injuries this year. <laughs> this year. That's it's the goal. <laughs> and it's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, Draftworks Brewery is going to host a beer garden, so there'll be that. Oh, and nice. then the so student chapter of the Society of American Foresters is going to have food. So you can have food, you can buy some beer, you can enjoy all the activities. Of course, the museum will be open along with all of our outbuildings and it'll be free for the day to walk, you know, always walk around. Aww. Now, the actual event is not free. It is our main fundraiser and a huge fundraiser for the woodsman team and oh, the sure. students. Yeah. Of so it's a the small university. admission. Right. It's four bucks. It's $10. Oh, wow. yeah. 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 We're breaking yeah. the bank. Or if you haven't spent all your money on beer. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's $10 for family, it's $4 for adult, uh, $3 for senior, and I think a buck for students. Somewhere right. around there. And it all is going on on the grounds. All going on on the grounds. Wow. So we're going to have uh, the woodsman competitions in the actual woodsman's arena. We're going to have demonstrations. We'll have the sawmill running with the old steam engines. Ooh, which is really fun if you haven't seen that before. Yeah. It's going to be really cool. Wow. We'll have the horses out. We'll have the kids' activities. There'll be tours up in all around. The museum will be open. It's going to be a heyday. It's kind of like right. the, the kickoff for the spring spring season. Yeah. That'll be yep. the first day that the all of the outbuildings are open. So if you've oh, come out to the cool. fort recently, you can't get into the buildings. Right. But starting on the 30th of April, you can. So we definitely have that. Again, check us out on Facebook. It'll all be there. There's lots going on. Like I say, bust out your flannels and cross cuts and come on out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then following that, the next week, we have May 3rd which is Give Local, and we oh, are yeah. part of Give Local this year. In addition to just being part of the biggest 24-hour giving campaign in the state, we are also having a Celebrate Community with Culture and Cute Companions. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and it's not just me and Jesse. Yeah, yeah. There's other I was cute companions. Say, you <laughs> yeah. guys are cute. <laughs> but, yeah. We are working with the Western Montana History Humane Society, uh. and we're going to have who knows how many little fuzzy critters oh, out there. Cute. We're going to have some kids' activities. We're having uh, barbecue food trucks and who knows what other food trucks out wow. there so people can have lunch. Uh, we'll have a donor lounge, so if you donate, you'll get entered in a raffle. You'll get discounts off the food trucks. You'll get to play some horseshoes or whatever other crazy activities we come up with. Uh, we're hoping to have ponies and pony rides, so you Aww. never know. It'll be like a little cart and take yeah. people on little pony rides. We'll see. Lots in progress. <laughs> um, but there will be a lot of fun, fuzzy creatures to give a hug. And it is from 11 to 1 during the Give Local on May 3rd. So you can come out, have lunch, hug a kitty, hug donate, a pony. Donate to wherever you want donate to. Donate to wherever yeah. you yes, want to you guys. us. <laughs> <laughs> And um, in addition to like all of that, we let's see the food, the lunch, the fun. It's just going to be a fabulous day. There will be you know all of the opening buildings and everything. Oh, and you get a sneak peek of the new exhibit. Oh, which leads me to our next event. Okay. Again, like us on Facebook. You'll find all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um. So March, May, May. May 14th is the grand opening of our new exhibit. So every two years, our new large wow. Heath Gallery gets a fantastic new exhibit. This year is going to be phenomenal because it is Missoula, collecting Missoula, which is a look into the Historical Museum's collection. So we have the most bizarre things down there. You know, we've collected the culture of Missoula for 150 plus right. years. Right. So, so we have we have uh, something like forty thousand artifacts in our collection, wow. and at any given time, there's only about two or three hundred on display. So yeah. this is a really fun chance to get all the really cool things that just haven't fit into exhibits before, and for people to get an idea of how museums work, how mm -hmm. why we collect what we collect, and how we preserve things. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So during the Give Local Day, you'll get a sneak peek. 
And then on 12 to 4 on that Saturday, May 14th, it'll be a grand opening. We'll have beverages and snacks and all sorts of fun stuff. So we want to tell the community to come out and have fun. And wow. that's it for the, you know, that's, that's all. all. That's all. So that's all. Sounds like these guys have to come back. <laughs> I know. I was just going to say, we, we we will. Recap. You're going to yeah. have to yeah. remind us of what's going on yeah. in the weeks <laughs> as they go. But and definitely check us out. I mean, there's ways to contact us. Facebook, call us, email us. Go to our website, uh, fortmissoula.org. And, you know, we're always having things out there, so yeah. the public can reach us anytime. I forgot to mention too that um, we're looking for volunteers. So yes. we, oh, for all nice. of for all of these fun <laughs> events, we, yeah. we could use volunteers. And and for school field trips as well, we get about three thousand kids out each year, and we couldn't do it without volunteers. So if if you know someone, or you happen to like history, or just like talking to kids, then um, give me a call at the museum, or email us on Facebook, or and there's a the variety website. of volunteer opportunities. Oh, what you can work inside place. the fort, you can work with kids, you can work in collections, you can work with me doing events, you can work with Christiana yeah, doing events. Yeah, it sounds education. like the events are going to be somewhat labor intensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's fun. We have a pretty good little army of volunteers, but we could always use a few more enth enthusiastic sure. folks. There's yeah, a yeah. lot of fun stuff out there. <laughs> I was thinking too, you know, MCAT has that a drone thing. Oh. And only one young fella, Mason Good, he works with Scott on the animation and the summer camps. He's kind of got it figured out, so maybe we should get him to go for the um, some of the events. Yeah, and give you some oh, good that'd be oh, really fun. fun. He you. should come out for Forestry Day. That's what yeah, I was yeah. thinking. Yeah, from a yeah, yeah that'd, that'd be really yeah. cool. Because the fella David Egg, for those of you watching out there, David E G G, like an egg. He has a flyover around mm -hmm. the fort. Mm -hmm. I'll email it to you. I think mm -hmm. he may have put it on our Facebook page he might have one put it on uh, But yeah, page. yeah, I've so seen a really cool one. It's a good resource for mm -hmm. people to be able to see yeah. an overview mm -hmm. of the yeah. fort. Yeah, it would be fun because it's gorgeous out there. It's a 32 acre park, it's right. not just a museum. Yeah, yeah. We have so much going on. And I think for a lot of people who live in town who don't, you know, think about going regularly to any of the cultural institutions mm -hmm. in town, go back out to the fort because there's always something new happening. And, it, and, and, it, and we're now free to all Missoula County residents. So even if you stop oh, in for five right. minutes on your way yeah. home from lunch or something, you, you know, it's always good to pop in. We like going for a walk. It is one mile. If you walk around the fort, the oh. historical museum, it is one mile. I've got to come I, out and do that. It. Cause, yeah. So it's a perfect way to get your mile in or your 10,000. That's a great idea. <laughs> idea. I'm going to do that next Take weekend. Take a break. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it takes about 15 minutes, and it's really just fresh air and beautiful. Oh, great. Well, good luck. Yes. Thank you, my I love. hope you guys are both drinking your coffee. We oh, yeah. We are very yeah. caffeinated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we'll, you'll come back, right? You didn't give us a Yeah, give us a Oh, speaking of which, how did the book sale go? Phenomenal. I oh, was God. there. I got yes. great books. <laughs> Our goal was 7000 with your help and the yeah. community support. We knocked it out of the park and made over $11,000. Oh, it went really All well. All of yeah. that money goes back to restoring the museum and doing education yeah. programs. Yeah, yeah. They had an amazing selection of yeah. books. It was great. It was fun. I have so many books. Everyone got books for Christmas. I <laughs> bought those, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that went well. All right. I guess we better go. Thank you for, for Thanks stopping Thanks for having by. us. Thanks for everything you do. Thank yeah. you. And um, we'll be right back. Here's a little more of the St. Patty's Day Parade. And hopefully we've got a guest out there. We'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll just come back and cry. So we'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs>
here we are. Hey, it's on me. <laughs> Welcome back to Missoula Live. It's Scott. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm being interviewed by uh, Kim Anderson. I'm invisible. Oh no, there I am. Yeah. <laughs> so Joel has moved to the controls, as you can tell, and yep. I'm here chatting with Scott, who's going to tell us about uh, maybe a little more detail yes. about the drop-in camps and the summer camps. Mm -hmm. We do our uh, every Saturday until like Memorial Day. We're going to do. Uh, um, um, stop in animation camp every Saturday for this, you know, and it's from one to five for ten dollars. It's basically we get to babysit your kids, and also your kids get to learn a nice little skill from stop animation. And of course, if they get a little bored of that, we can always entertain them by making a live action type movie, <laughs> which we have, and we've shown a couple of those for sure. And these have been really well attended, right? Oh yeah, D this last week was kind of low because as the weather gets nicer, right. there are less and less kids wanting to do like interior type activities. Sure. So that's something that, uh, that we're going to be gearing towards for our summer camps is our we have our wildlife film camp that's happening um, last week in June. Mm -hmm. Towards the last week in June because it's very it's very weird because there's that two weeks between June and July that conflict with the July 4th weekend schedule because oh, you know a lot right. of families like to go off go and do that thing. Yeah. I, th I believe it's like the 21st through the 24th or 25th of June is our very first uh, summer camp, and that's where we're going to go to Raptors of the Rocky with Kate Davis. And that's basically one to five, Monday through Friday. So for that summer camp, kids will be primarily outside. They'll be interacting with mm -hmm. some of Kate's amazing birds yes. and learning how to film wildlife, right? <laughs> Yeah, and um, the one big thing that we're doing this year is our uh, instead of doing a directing camp like we did this last couple yeah. of years with like the, the more like condensed type of stuff, we're doing a full day camp. We're doing from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, and that's the last week in July. And what is what is the age age? That range? we're looking for kids who are a little more maturity, a little older, right? Um, between. Um, um, the ages of 13 and about 18 or so and we're, we're looking into that because we have a couple of the kids from past five or six years or so that we've been doing these summer camps where yeah. it's like oh I've aged out and we're like well here you no, go. You have it. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this the camp where they're going to be making the zombie yes. movie? Yes, and we're uh, and, and, and hopefully we're going to be work, working with Richard and Ben. They're from Roothead Studios. Uh -huh. um, I, I'll, I haven't really co contacted them too, too recently because I'm all about doing after school programs. Because right. right now I'm all about the after You're school busy. programs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and those will start ending and peeling off, probably um, really hitting all these summer camps and uh, promoting them. Hit, you know, promoting them hard in um, May and pretty much June because it, usually it's like we don't get anybody really signed up as much. But then as soon as school gets out, it's usually the week the, after one week uh, the kids are home yeah. and the parents are like, "Get out!" I can speak from experience. <laughs> then the panic hits, yes. and you're like, "Oh my God, what can I get from?" But I think what's what would be really smart is if you if you have children. And they haven't had any experience in film or no. you know making videos. They bring them to a drop-in day. Yeah, that's a great to way a to get. And if they fall in love with it, then you're like summer camp. Yeah, because we do that because our Saturday drop-ins are strictly stop animation. We're right. going to sit in the studio. They're going to go all. They have all the run of the building basically because it's Saturday, and a lot of times we nobody's here to yell at us. So. <laughs> <laughs> and kids love that. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, we have adult supervision. We have me, we have Noel, and then we have, of course, our junior staff, which is Neil and um, Mason. That's great. I mean, and they're and they're younger, right? Right, and they've been through the program. The, oh yeah, yeah. Well. Neil's been through the program. Mason's been through the summer camp program, and they just kind of they just kind of show up. That's so so like after school, they just come over here, and you know, yeah. I don't know if they have lives or whatever, but. <laughs> <laughs> this is live. This is live. This is live. I don't know about live. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's pre then it shows over and over again. Uh. Uh, so, so once again, the drop in every Saturday yes, until. But Yes, until Memorial Day, Memorial Day. Yeah. and then I want to, um, like a parent appreciation day, what I'm going to try oh, to do nice. is I'm going to invite all the kids who've done stop animation and all the parents and we just have all the movies that we've done this year and then we just kind of sit back, watch the movies and then feed them. Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be just a nice little party. Yeah. And then, of course, promote our summer camp. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the summer camps again are there's a there's the wildlife yes. film. And of course, if and of course we have the stop animation. Um, summer camp as well which okay, is a week-long we stuff that. that's happening 
my mind always goes blank with like it's specific all on dates. The website. But uh, yeah. it's all July. It's the I think it's the second week in July that which is like the first full week that doesn't fall on July fourth, which is happening like on a Monday. Right. So we're going to do that week after, so it's like July eleventh through like the fifteenth. Um, that's our first um, stop animation um, week long camp, mm -hmm. and of course there's always a big draw to that. So we'll usually extend it another week for any additional kids who want to do it. Right. Because that I mean these camps sell out, so it's never too early to start planning mm -hmm. for your kids. Employment during the summer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, How's the morning show going? Oh, it's going great. We, uh, um, if you guys don't already know, I do a morning show on um, MCAT called Wake Up Missoula, and it's a it's a nice little show. Uh, it's a bi daily show, so we do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, where we talk about what's happening in Missoula in terms of like events. It's like uh, it's a talk show, mm -hmm. and we kind of expand on um, community calendar events, and it's yeah. really fun. It, I like I like to. You know, we talk about all sorts of different things. Sometimes I do a little city council report, just kind of like get the bare bones of what happened at city council, like based on what's happening and following along what's basically affecting Missoula, especially with, I, I don't want to like get into that. it because I don't want to be like, oh, Missoula Mercantile. And then yeah. I was like, oh, don't mention that around my dad. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate your kind of, you know, concise wrap-ups of what's going on yeah. in city government because it's, you know, for most of us, we don't want particularly to <laughs> devote four or five hours to attending a city council yeah. meeting. And, he, I, I, and I, I feel bad for Joel because he has to um, do his meeting tonight as well. Oh, and it's supposed right. to be a long one because aren't they talking about the Missoula Merc? Yeah. <gasps> that's Ooh. right. It's going to be a long So if you're interested in public comment, you can go on down there at 7 p.m. <laughs> Wait, I probably shouldn't advertise it. Then it'd be longer. Well, but <laughs> or you just tune in to Scott's show on Wednesday and find out Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try to get the bare bones because one time we I, I did a meeting and there was like three hours of public comment yeah and so I did like okay about three or four good quotes from either side and so on and so forth but it seems like with the what's going on with the Merck it's like everyone's like against it it's like pretty much everyone's against it well it's it's yeah right, I mean, the, a lot of people are very upset and <laughs> rightfully so because no one wants to lose that we probably shouldn't talk about this because we're talking about our summer camps <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to say, so Wake Up Missoula yes. airs... Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, live at 8 a.m., and then it repeats that afternoon at 2 p.m. Oh, good. So yeah. if you sleep in, yeah. you can be like, hey, what's happening it's in the still, afternoon, It's still Missoula? technically, it's like Wake Up College Kids <laughs> for our afternoon show. We just changed the title, Wake Up College Kids. Right. <laughs> Okay, well, I think yeah. um, we've probably chatted about that as much as we can, and we'll fill out the l remaining few minutes with maybe some more of the St. Patrick's Day yep. Parade. But I'm Kim Anderson, and I'm saying goodbye for myself and for Joel Baird. Uh, this is Missoula Live. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you in two weeks.